Life here. Welcome to part three of creating a squash book. I decided to do part three live. That way, if you have any questions or if I forget to cover something, you can ask me and we can interact. And I'm done now the two, I'm done completely two squash books. One of these is decorated. Let's see, one of these is not decorated on the inside. So what I'm gonna do in this video is a few things and even some things that I discovered along the way. So I'm gonna show you a few ways to close up your squash book by creating hard covers, okay? And by creating, or just how to create the hard covers, I should say, and then how to create these little belly bands, I mean, or little ribbons that kind of tie around the back, okay? So just, just things like that I'm gonna show you. And this is a finished, as I mentioned, this is a finished squash book. So what I wanna show you first is my scan and cut. And just give me one moment while I grab something. One moment. Okay, hello, Teresa. So what I needed to do is I needed to grab this, this hard thing for you to cut. So what I'm using is I'm using a Carl cutter, and this is what I had to grab with, with this piece here. So what you do is you get your, you get your cardstock from, you know, you, when you get cardstock from Stampin' Up! and it comes in this package, and this is super thick. So you can't use your trimmer for this. You have to use a Carl cutter or some kind of rotary cutter, or just an X-Acto knife. So what I want to do is take, I want to get five inch pieces of cardboard. I'll get a couple of these because we need to make a cover. What I mean by rotary cutter, and this, this needs to be on a flat table, but this is a rotary blade. I'll show you the rotary blade, see? Rotary blades cut through thicker materials. So I'm just gonna go ahead and, I'm just gonna go ahead and put this down flat, and I have to press a few times. I know I'm done when I start bending and this comes off, okay? Makes sense? So I need a five inch cover. Now I've tried this with the inside of the back of the cardstock, and it just wasn't as strong. The regular cardstock, this is the specialty paper. So I did, I did try it with the back of like the, you know, just the regular sort of lightweight cardboard, but this worked a lot better. See how thick this is? And don't ask me paperweights, because I really don't know paperweights. Like everyone keeps asking me, what's the weight of this and that? I just send them tables. I get asked like all the time. I guess I could create a table. I guess I could do research and create a table, but I can never find a definitive answer on any of the paperweights. So I just refer you to someone else's table and hopefully they did the research. All right, so this is what we have now. What we're working with is some cardboard and some hexagons. This is a little trick I figured out with the scan and cut, so I'm gonna show you that first. I know a lot of you have the scan and cut. And if you don't have a scan and cut, just do this. Just go cut your shape, right? Cut your own hexagon. I'm sorry, octagon. Let's see, one, two, three, four. Yes, eight-sided. Cut your own octagon. Create a shape sort of like this. What we're doing is creating a little envelope for the cover, and the envelope's gonna fold around the cover. Hi, Pam Pamela and Anike. I hope I'm saying your name right. So what you want is for your scan and cut, any scan and cut, doesn't matter. Hi, Diana. You wanna get a shape that's built in to your scan and cut. It's built into every scan and cut. I'm just happen to be using an SDX 125. I put a piece of black cardstock in there, okay? And I'm gonna now, I can't change my tripod that much. I can't change the angle, so I have to try to do this. I have to try to sort of tilt it, tilt it like this. Okay, so we'll just tilt it because I can't move my camera that much. I'll move the scan and cut itself. We need to go get, that was me, that was me cutting out some cute little pattern papers. We'll delete all that. So turn on your machine. You're gonna see pattern and scan, and you're gonna go ahead and click on pattern, okay? Hi, Eileen. And you're gonna get a built-in pattern. You want this pattern here. And you're gonna scroll down to the, the octagon, right here. BA-A044. Okay, and you want this to be, this is just me experimenting for you, so it saves you a lot of time, right? 8.1 inches wide. It's gonna stay in proportion because it's a perfect octagon. Oops, 8.1. Why the one, you'll see, because we're gonna have to fold it over that piece of cardboard. If it, 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 Normally I would just say eight inches, right? And if you're using a paper trimmer, just do it a little more than eight inches because I'm gonna go 8.1. That worked because it has to round, when I score it, it has to kind of wrap around the paper. And I'm gonna be able to score it evenly on all those sides. You're gonna cut two of them, but you can only fit one on a piece of eight and a half by 11 cardstock. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say set 
and I'm going to make one that's like this, right? I'm going to put it on that side of the mat because that's where that's where the paper is, right? That's where my cardstock is, and I'm going to go ahead and cut that. And I'm using Auto Blade, but if you're using Stampin' Up cardstock on a CM model, go ahead and cut it with go ahead and cut it with um, a blade depth of five. Okay, so I'll go ahead and cut two of these. Well, I already cut them. I didn't even need to make you wait to cut it, but you know what? The camera's already shaking, the machine's already going, and it's already cutting it, so let's go ahead and cut that octagon. Now remember, the paper is only eight and a half wide. So because of the margin on the right side, and because the paper's only eight and a half wide, check this out, right? You can't get any bigger than that. So you, you really don't want to go any bigger than that because we're sort of making a little envelope to go around the, the front of the cover. So see how close that is? It's a close cut for an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. 8.1 inches. So cut two of these for your covers, for your squash book. All right, and you're gonna cut two of these pieces of cardboard with some kind of Carl cutter or exacto knife, two thick pieces. You don't try to use your paper trimmer. You will dull your blade when you try to use your paper trimmer to cut something like that thick. All right, now while I'm here, because I, don't, I wanna get rid of this machine, it's just, I need to do things with my snail dies later. I need to do things with my paper trimmer, my scoreboard. I need to just show you something while I'm here, but I'm not going to go ahead and cut these. I just want to show you how I got these other little shapes. Now, if you recall, maybe a couple weeks ago, I did a shaker card tutorial. Let's just go home and you can go ahead and save that if you want or delete it. I'm going to go into this pattern and I did a shaker card where I used this. You'll go into these shapes here and I used this postage stamp shape. It's really cool. I'll put it in the notes of this video. I use this shape here. Well, I use that a lot in this in this squash book tutorial. I think I used it in part two with the scan and cut. And I showed you how to make extra little ones to put off to the right. But then just now, I, I needed something solid because my backgrounds were getting too crap. Like my front of my covers were getting too busy. So I, I cut some out in Bermuda Bay or you could cut them out in cardstock. Okay, so what I did for these is I made them about, well, I, I can't recall, let's see, three inches. I can't recall how big I made these. Let me look three inches wide. Yeah. Yeah, three. I made them about three inches wide, right? And then the, then the height changed proportionally. When you change the... And you don't want to make these unproportional because the stamp shape will look funny if you change the proportions. So that's about three inches wide. And I made a bunch of these for the covers just so I can decorate. Because I'm going to be doing a few of these books. So anyway, that's the postage stamp shape. Now I'm done with the scan and cut. I'm unloading my mat. And I'm done with my scan and cut. Now I can close the front cover and make more room on my table now for all the other tools I'm going to take out, right? So move that away, get rid of this mat. So now I want to take, let's see, now we need our Simply Scored. Okay, Simply Scored. And we need our octagon, octagons. Okay, I'm going to tilt that down. All right, yeah, I like that we have a global community here from people all over the world. Well, that's why I go live at different times. I mean, then my Australian friends can watch me, my European friends can watch me, and my U.S. friends. I mean, everybody can watch when I change the times up. Well, plus, I never know when I'm going to have good internet. So now what you want to do is you have, let me just kind of go what we're doing here. We're, we're making a little envelope for this to wrap around the sides, but we need it, we need it to wrap around enough of the sides so that when we put the, the cover of our book in there, our little squash book, which we're going we're gonna to we're gonna put the cover on this squash book, right? Let me close the squash book, right? It's good. The squash book is four inches wide. The cover is five inches wide. We need to cover this up, right? The black part enough that when you put this on, you can't see any of this cardboard. Okay. So we're going to, you're going to score one and a half inches on all the sides. You don't need that paper there. You're just going to score one and a half inches on all sides. Now that, that extra little, because our, because we made the, here, let, me, let me make sure you got some light here. Better lighting here for you can see the score. Because we made that little, this, this octagon a little bit bigger on each side, right? 8.1, I mean not on each side, we made it 8.1. Then we have a way to wrap, right? This, this cardboard with still getting a little bit of a margin on the outside. So I, I've been experimenting. When I did eight, it was not big enough when I did eight inches. So I'm doing, I did 8.1 inches for, the, for this. Okay, so I hope that works. We're going to do two of those. I have the sticky notes on. If you, if you want to know why I have the sticky notes on 
my little squash book that was to help me keep which side was right side up which side was right uh which which was the front which was the back it was just helping me you know remember which was the front and which was the back so when i put on my decorations okay so we have we've scored it one and a half, one and a half on all sides now i'm going to put these together and we're going to cut out these little nibs because we're making like an envelope shape so we need to cut out these little nibs these little triangles they're not nibs they're triangles so get your paper snips to cut them out pretty nice and and when in doubt cut inside the line whenever you're doing envelopes right whenever you're in doubt don't cut outside the line cut on the line we could have scored it first too but i'm just going to cut first See, it's better to cut inside the line than it is to cut on or on the other side of the line because when you fold it over, you want it to be even. And we can always trim it with our paper trimmers later. And it probably would have been easier to cut these little triangles out after I scored. But we will score as well. I mean, not score, but um, fold. Like with the, with the bone folder, right? We need to, or what's it called? Burnish, burnish, burnish. And I did one without a cover. You don't, oh, you don't even have to have a nice thick cover on your squash book. You don't need to. You can actually do it cute. It's cute without a cover as well. So I'm just lining this up here so I can cut these perfectly. Put the papers on top of each other. And I hope that you've done your homework and got your squash book all ready. And all you need is a cover. Um, Really good suggestion already was using it for a graduation autograph book. Anyway, if you know if you have an idea what you're going to use your squash book for, you can use it for a mini album, a card. I'm using mine for thank you cards. That's what my squash book. One might be for another kind of card, but I'm going to be writing like thank you throughout it. Okay, so that's what you want. You want this little envelope shape. And now you want to take your bone folder, your spatula, right? Whatever you've been using to fold with. Let's see what we have here. I know I have lots of tools here. I'll just grab this. Whatever, whatever you use to fold with. Okay. Hope I have good lighting here. I, I turned on all my lights. I, when I do this, I like to, when I, when I score down, then I like to turn it over, right? When I make an envelope, I like to turn it over. And then, because that's kind of like a valley when you, when you go down. And now I call that like the mountain. It just helps the paper not, not, break now this paper's dyed all the way through it's black all the way through but if you have paper that has like a white inner core it's very important not to get the paper to crack but if the paper does crack if you're using cardstock that cracks and you can see the white inside just get a black marker get a black marker and you know draw on it it's all good all right so that's what we did and um now i don't think i need the scoreboard anymore nope i don't need this need that anymore you want to take your little pieces of cardboard well actually we do need it to help line this up later but see how now we're going to wrap this perfectly see how nice that is i should have cut this a little bit smaller here let's try this one yeah this one's perfect okay and i'm going to wrap it around so now what and that was what that little point point extra was the little point okay so we need to now use I like to use both a combination of glue and, right, a little combination of glue and the, the Seal Plus. The Seal Plus is very strong, but I also like to put a little bit of glue in the corners just for good measure. And um, also on the sides, I just like to put a little bit of glue there, maybe in the middle, just because I want to make sure that it's really strong. So we're going to put that in there. Okay, center that. Okay, so that part's stuck in there. Now you're gonna do this part. I'm using Seal Plus, the really strong adhesive on all the flaps. And I'm just making, oops, sometimes you have to use your fingers so it doesn't get stuck. Okay, see what I'm doing? And then I'm just gonna, I'm gonna put a little bit of glue there. Where'd my glue holder go? Here we go. I'm putting a little bit of glue in the corners because I do not want these corners to come up. So that's just what I did for my, you know, when I did my practice runs. And then I'm just going to fold up the bottoms and the bottom and top and then the sides. But it doesn't really matter because it's a square, right? 
It's a square. And see how that covered? See how the black covers your cover? I mean, now your paper. That's why I did that, that size octagon, because it covers my cover. Look at that strong cover. Then what you have to do is you have to still, if you didn't get them all, and they start hanging over the sides, it means you didn't cut the triangles out big enough earlier. See, if you didn't cut your triangles out big enough, you'd have to get your little snips and snip your triangles. Hope this is all making sense, and I don't need to do it again. If it makes sense, just say yes, it makes sense, or do it again. I could do the other cover. But I'm hoping this just makes sense. Because really, I need to show you the back cover. That's the point of this whole thing. So I like to use my trimmer again. I mean, not trimmer, but the scoreboard to help line up. Hello, honeybee stamps. Okay. And whoever else I miss saying hello to. I know more have come in. All right. Yvonne. Hello, Yvonne. Okay, so what we're doing is we're taking we're taking our our little book, right? Our squash book. That was the front. I put my little smiley face there to, to know that it was right side up. And now it's right side up. you got to make sure you do that right. You don't want to mount your cover on and if it's upside down. So now this is the back. Now I'm going to take my little sticky note off. That's the back. Now you're going to flip this guy over. Right? Flip it over. And you want to mount this onto the back. You want to mount this onto this cover. I'm just going to do some like snail adhesive. But remember, you need a little margin there. So... This is bigger. This was a five inch piece and this is a four inch piece. Okay, now what I like to do again is use a little bit of glue. Always use a little bit of glue, even when you're using this, this uh, seal plus. Always use some glue for the corners because you always want your corners to be not, not come up. And if you want to put some glue in the middle for good measure, you can. But always use a little bit of glue in the corners whenever you do a project like this, just to keep things from flipping open or flipping up or curling up on the sides. Okay, now here's how I use my scoreboard. I put this over here on my scoreboard in the corner just to help line it up so it doesn't slip and make sure it's square. And I'm just, everything's still good. Everything's still good. I stood, I stand above it kind of, and I just center it. Okay, so that's my cover of my squash book. And you're going to do that again for your front cover. Okay, pretty cool cover, right? Look at that. And you, and you hid all that part. You hid the cardboard. Cardboard is not showing. Hello, Nola. All right, so now, what I want to show you now is this last part. So you're going to take your, remember you remade some, remember we made some squares? Or did we not make the squares? We'll go ahead and make the squares. So get a piece of, now this is because the back of your squash book was five inches, right? We wrapped it, it was five inches. You always want to have that quarter inch mark. So let's go with, let me move that over. Four point. Okay, let's just let me just turn this over. Hi, Susan. Finishing our squash book. We're gonna go with four point seven five. Okay, I'm going with four point seven five because I want that quarter inch margin. Maybe you didn't see this, but I did make a bunch of these earlier. Maybe I didn't show it on the film, but I did. I made a bunch of squares, but I don't want you to miss any steps. So four point seven five inches, and I will definitely put all this in the description. So now this is the back of our book. It's the back of our book. Right? So we wouldn't put this cuteness on the back of our book. That's the back of our book. That cuteness could go in the front of your book, but that cuteness is really something like this would be better for the back of your book. See how I just put mushrooms? Something more plain to let it know it's the back. In the front, we decorate with one of these as well. But this is the important part. So you're going to put a little strip of, of, of um, seal plus across sort of two-thirds of the way down like that. And then you're going to put your seal plus all over this guy. What we're doing is now we're doing the ribbon. I'm showing you how to close this, right? Putting the ribbon. So you have this seal plus, right? Maybe maybe once across the middle for good measure. And now put that piece there. Now you can do your ribbon. So I'm going to use the organdy. Uh, let's do let's do a couple feet. I mean, just to be safe. Unless you're using that little antique slider, it's probably best to use a couple feet of ribbon because. In the May May Crafts, the one that inspired this craft for me, she, she talked about using a lot of extra ribbon because you're not sure how people are going to use this when you give it to them or if they're going to make the book really thick with pictures. Like if you're giving it to someone, they turn it into an album and they need it to be thicker, so you give them extra ribbon. So now you take your ribbon. It's a couple feet long, and you're going to fold it in half like this. Glittered organdy ribbon is the best thing since sliced bread. If you don't know about this ribbon, it's fantastic. It ties well. 
It ties flat. It's great for shipping and it has glitter all the way through. So yes, we'll get glitter all over the... So I fold it in half, then find the middle and I do that. Okay. I lay it down like that. Okay. That's the back. Now I'm going to put my little cover over it and voila. So that is how to put a cover on your squash book. And you would do the same thing for the front. And if you need me to do the front, I can, but I'm going to I have one that where I've already done the front. Okay. Sorry, my camera's shaking so much, but I'm excited and I'm shaking my table. So you'd have the back of your squash book, the front of your squash book. And, and then of course you would tie, you'd put your cover on. Hey, you know what? If you want, you don't even need a thick cover on the front of your squash book. That I just discovered something that would be cute. Just like that. Maybe you don't even need another cover, hard cover. But two feet is good. Actually, we could have gone more than two feet. Because that's still, I don't think there's a whole lot of extra ribbon with that two feet there. Right? All right, so now let's do this. Let's show you the slider. So this was, this was just tying it. Right? That was, you could just tie a bow. And then for the slider, the antique sliders, what you do with those is just, let me find those again. Fine. Antiques. That was. I just thought of different ways to cover to close the book. Well, here we'll just use this one. We'll just use this one again. Okay. You you put the slider in one side, right? You put you just put the slider in. This is just another way to close your book. And I did use glue on the end of this ribbon to try to keep it from fraying so much. This ribbon is retired. The glitter burgundy ribbon is not retired, but this Bermuda Bay ribbon that I'm using here is retired because I just used something that matched. And I like that cover. Okay, so you just do something like that with your slider. These are called antique sliders, and these are retiring soon. But they're part of the world of good sweet. Many of you have them because you saw me use them as part of the world of good sweet. And now this is another use for your antique slider. And heck, you could even use your antique corners in the top if you're doing a different theme. See, so you just put it in there like that. So that's another way to close your book. Okay, and this one that has the two covers. I mean, the, the front and the back, okay? And then the third way to close your book was, this is what I did for this one, is I thought, let's not even put a cover on the book. Let's just make, the, let's make this cuteness. And then for this one, I used the Pool Party Sheer Ribbon. And I thought that went really well because it's really thin and it, fit, it, it was just nice under here. And this book's all decorated and it's still not that thick. So I don't think you even need a cover. It will look cute without a cover. There's the Sheer Pool Party Ribbon. And there's the Squash Book. Okay, so there's the cover. Let's put that cut. Let's put this little, I'll show you what that was. Show you how I got that. And then I'm just going to do a couple little die cuts to put something in my book. Because the, the title of this video, I said I was going to show you some embellishments. So we want to put like this little shape was what I just talked about with the scan and cut. Let's find. Remember, we've been cutting out extra shapes whenever we were cutting out our we were cutting out our things and I said, cut out extra shapes. When we were cutting out our triangles in the last video, I said, I told you how to cut out these triangles with your scan and cut. So then I said, you know, cut out some extra shapes. And these little postage stamps shapes work great with this whole theme. I'm going to open up the real red and I'm going to put the silicone mat down. Right. And I'm just going to get the snailed it nailed it stamp set this this stamp here called happy mail enclosed because I think that's cute with this theme right we're gonna mount it onto a stamping block we're gonna tap 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 Let's use our sticky note here just to make sure the ink is good that it's coming off good and it is now when you stamp onto your basic white cardstock make sure you stamp onto the corner near I mean near a corner so that you can use your punch you can use your rectangular postage stamp punch that way because your punch will reach in there. So we're going to open up the rectangular postage stamp punch. I'm just blowing on it. You don't want it to smear. Try not to get it to touch the punch because you don't want it to smear. And there is how you get your little happy mail enclosed. Okay. And then you put some dimensionals on there. You could use big or small dimensionals. I just happen to have the small ones laying here because you want to pop that up onto this little, onto this little guy. And I thought it looked nice like this in this shape. Hi, Patty. Okay. 
And now you have the front of your book, your cover of your book. And no matter what you put this on, it doesn't matter what you put this on, it's going to contrast well. Unless you put it on the same exact color, in other words. The idea is good contrast. And I'll go into my bucket of crafty goodness and we'll find some more fun stuff to put on your cover. Okay? So we have we can put things on our cover. It cares. Now you can put that on there. Maybe I don't want to block the word hello. Here. Happy mail. You know what I mean? I like I like how hello shows up, right? I could put it down there. But they're gonna untie it anyway. Happy mail sticks out. So you see how you could just got a little embellishment for your cover. Then you take your bucket of crafty goodness. And you have your little embellishments that I just got done cutting out with my scan and cut. I mean, how cute are these little guys, right? All these came from the Snail Mail Designer Series paper. So super fun, and these are ways to decorate your covers. And of course, you can keep in mind where you tie it does matter because where you tie it, well, this sheer ribbon doesn't matter because you can see through it. But where you tie it, you're going to kind of block whatever's under there, right? So you always have to have a bucket of crafty goodness for every type of Designer Series paper. And everyone's like, all worried about what to put them in instead of worrying about getting them themselves. I like I like when people go online and they all talk about storage. How do you store it? How do you do this? How, what containers should I put things in? Instead of just making things, people are worried about the containers to put things in. This I save trash, guys. Don't worry about your containers to put things in. This is a piece of trash from one of my, I don't even know what it's from. I use Taco Bell nacho containers. Like, don't worry about your containers to put things in. Worry about cutting things out and making things and not worry about what to put them in. Just grab whatever you have and put it in there. All right, so now, all right, we got that. Now, the last thing I wanted to do in this video is show you these snail dies because this makes awesome little embellishments, right? This, These are called snail dies. And I could have made this one, too, for the front of the cover as well. See? Instead of cutting out this postage stamp, I could have just used this shape here as well. But, you know, we can make a couple mushrooms and hearts would be cute, too. All right. And a couple, we'll put a couple thought balloons. Well, actually, the thought balloons I make with the, with the white paper. But definitely, that little thought balloon fits really well with the hello stamp. See? Hello? Yeah. Just get your little, get yourself a Taco Bell nacho container or whatever. Or any plastic container. But don't worry about your containers. My point is... Make your, just make stuff and don't worry about what to put your stuff in when you make it. That's the least of your trouble. The bigger issue is making stuff, right? Not what to store your stuff in. It's called procrastination when you're worried about what to store your stuff in. You're, you're procrastinating instead of making stuff. You're worried about what to put it in. So now I'm opening up the mini, the mini cut and emboss machine, right? I open that up and now we need the plates to cut this. So I just grabbed all my plates because I didn't have them organized before the video. So... We're just going to grab, we need a base plate, plate number one. And then when you use the die cut, you need uh, plate number two. You need two plate number twos. And these are just embossing folders. There's other things you can do with the, so let's see. I'm trying to find the other plate number two. Here's the plate number two that's all scratched. So you put that one on the bottom. Okay, so here's what you do. You're going to put the base plate in there. You're going to put your scratch plate number two. You're going to put some paper down. And you're going to put the die over it, and you're going to cut it. So, let's make some cute little envelopes. I think the cuter the better, like the smaller. I mean, not smaller. I think I think these like little small patterns make great envelopes better. And then that would be like the bottom of the envelope that folds up. So, let me let me try to get this right for a second. I got to think. I got to think for a second. You know, we'll do one each way and then I don't have to think cuz you can cut two at once. Then we'll know which one we did right. Because there's, there's a way that when you fold up the hearts, you want them to be... Well, actually, it doesn't really matter because I use the other half of the envelope because I glue them onto the thing. So let's do one heart is going to go... So this is the top of the envelope because it's smaller. One heart will be pointing up and one heart will be pointing down. Okay? I like the mini machine, Sue, but I, I like the bigger one better. But the mini one is only... Like, you see how big my camera is? I can't really fit the big one in the, in the camera hardly. Okay, so now I'm going to roll it through. I'm going to make little cute envelopes. And then later I can make a mushroom out of something just to show you the cute mushroom and thought balloon. All right. So let's see. This was... So we made two little stitched... These are little stitched envelopes, by the way. Stitched. So when the... when the That's the bottom of the envelope because it's thicker. See, the bottom of the mini envelope is is wider. So when you fold it up... 
along the score line. Is that right? No, that goes upside down. So you want the mini, let's see, when you fold it up, it wanted to go right side up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but then one side's always going to go, oh, that's it. That's how you want to do it. So this is the way you want to do it. Because look, now both, you don't care about the sides. You care about the top and the bottom of the envelope. Oh my gosh, it's so super cute. Actually, it really doesn't matter. But the hearts, I think, should face up when you do the bottom. So that means, let, let's just think about it for a second. I probably have to write this down to get this on, get this wrapped around my head. Okay, this is the bottom of the envelope. You, okay, you want it, you want to cut it upside down. Okay? So you want the hearts facing, that makes sense, right? It only makes sense. You want to cut the envelopes upside down, so when you turn them around and fold them back up, they're right side up. I should have known that. It's kind of like a duh moment. Okay, and that's your cute little envelope. And then you just take your little glue, and you just kind of, you can get some clothespins if you want, and sort of hold these shut. Okay, you want to just glue the little things. And then if you, if you want to put something in them, like the little letters, I mean, I'm going to put another piece of paper in that. Do this because if you want to get your papers in there, right, you don't want the glue to like stick, you don't want the glue to ooze out into the envelope and shut your envelope shut. So get a little piece of paper and rub it around while you're shutting your envelope. Okay, and let's do another, let's do one with a little letter. Okay, I know there was a little letter die. Here, here it is, this, this cute little guy. So let's use, and let's make a thought balloon and a letter. Then we can stamp on the letter. I'm just, what I'm doing now, if you just came in, I'm showing you how to make cute little decorations for your, um, for your squash book. Okay, we'll do a little thought balloon. We'll make a little mushroom. Okay, and we're going to make, now we're going to make the extra embellishments, the thought balloon, the, the little part that goes in the envelope, the little message, because we're going to stamp on it, and the little hello thing, and the mushroom. So now we have extra things for our squash book. Of course, you would just... Rinse and repeat and make lots of these. Okay, so we have our thought balloon, our mushroom. Mushroom we can just color. We'll, we'll color that with you. Now this, this little guy gets stuck in there. Get a piece of tape. Get it out, right? Get it out with tape. There's a little stitch die. I probably could have stamped it before I did the die cutting, but that's how to die cut. Let's move that off to the side. That's how to make the cute little envelopes. Put this on here. Okay, we have that, we have that, we have that. We need the little hello. This is the hello stamp. Okay, we'll use Bermuda Bay. And when you don't have photopolymer stamps, it probably was better to, it probably would have been better to, uh, to you know, stamp and then try to center it. But I want this to kind of stick out of the envelope, so I'm gonna kind of make it go to that side more. Okay, let me, let me, let me think for a second. Hold on. Before I stamp. See, I want it to sort of stick out like that. So, yeah, I want it to be up on the top left more. Because it's going to sort of stick out of the envelope, if that makes sense. Like that, you see? So that's why I stamped it the way I did. Now just get a little dimensional and hold it, or glue dot. Just get a glue dot. Just get something to hold it in there. Into your envelope so it doesn't slip out. And you, I'm going to do my thank you notes. I'm going to put thank you in all the stamps I can find for one of my squash books. I'm going to find all the thank you stamps I can find and make all these little envelopes with, with thank you in them. Okay, let's see. We could put some in the thought balloon as well. That would be a little snail saying hello. Okay, and now I can show you how to color the little, the little mushroom. So we're going to put that in our squash book and let's get a little blending brush. Okay, so for your blending brush, when you use your blending brushes, dip into your ink first. I don't use my blending brushes straight in the ink like I would with a sponge brayer. I put them, I put them on my stamping block first, the ink. And then you can sort of tap around and you can color your mushroom whatever color you want. It looks pretty cool. We could put that in our squash book. So that's how to make embellishments. We'll glue that one right on there. Okay. And we will... Now open back up our squash book and put some decorations in it. Let's move that out of the way. Oh, another thing you can do with your blending brush. What's great is you can do your edges. I like doing edges for, you know, for the extra little dimension of coloring around the edges of things. 
All right, so let's move that away. And let's get, we got our little envelopes. Let's see. I'm just trying to move things away so we don't get ink on our squash book. I, I can't even find my squash book at this point. Where the heck did it go? Here we go, here we go. Here it is, here it is. This is the one that we can decorate the inside of. Or we could decorate the inside of any one of them, but this is, the idea is, you don't want to make them too thick because your embellishment's inside because it's going to be harder to close. So, you, you know, you can, I, instead of making all these things stick down there with dimensionals and making them all puff up all over the place, I would take these, I'm trying to, I'm trying to I would take these and I would probably, let's see, like you want to take the, you want to take the surfaces that are, that are open up like that. And you want to put an embellishment there and you want to put an embellishment there. See, like big plain surfaces, but you want contrast. But I would glue this down, in other words, because I already have enough dimensionals. There's already dimensional in there. So I would glue that down to, to not make my book so, so thick in the end. Just put a little blob of glue, a little dab will do you. And then don't forget our little bucket of crafty goodness, because we have all these things we cut out earlier when we were cutting out when we were cutting out the different triangles. Like down here, I could do something like this. You know, let's see. I could do something like this because this one. Or you know what? I'm trying to just look at which one I could use down here. I want to use contrast. I don't want to use this one because it t it's, it's like the same one as the pattern above it. But that one would be cute, right? And the mushroom would be really cute inside there. So something like that would be really cute. Because the mushroom goes with the theme, so you put a little bit of glue on there. So I hope you understand that just, you know, you just keep doing this. Making stamped images, making your little cutouts, making your cute little pieces with your scan and cut. And your squash book will be awesome, but you don't, if you don't, if you think someone's going to put pictures in it, you don't need to cover every panel, leave it blank for them. Or actually put pictures in there for someone. I'm making a graduation card for someone, but I don't have a lot of pictures of them, but I could, you could do like through the years you know, and give someone an album with already pictures inside it, which would be fun. So let's look what else we can find in our bucket of crafty goodness. This little guy would be so cute over there, right? And then I even have stuff that I got from the paper pumpkin kit a couple months ago. Here, that guy would be cute right there. And so would these little letters. That little letter would be cute. These are the little ones I got from that other paper pumpkin kit. These were already made like that. So, I mean, this just goes on and on. It's so much fun. Here's a little letter. Put a little letter on one of them. So we could do something like, I think I'll put that little letter there because it has a little bit of red. But some of them don't need any decoration because there's already such a cute pattern on it. Right? This guy will be cute right here because it's not really, like there's not really a pattern. But, but that one is already, like these are already so busy. I don't think they need any decoration on them. But maybe up there with the pink we could put this little guy. I think the inside is done after this. I think, I think that's all the embellishments I put for this one. Maybe one more cute little snail envelope on the outside, maybe on the back, or actually a couple little loose snail envelopes, a couple little loose ones with little messages kind of that pop out when you open up the, the container and they just sort of fall out would be really fun. Put, I'm putting a little letter up there. I don't know if you can see that. I don't even know if that's in the camera view, but oop, I already glued him down and gluing him down. I think I'm, I think it's time for new glue. Right, there we go. He's so cute, he's such a happy snail. And I could have put him over here. I'll try to show you this book one more time and if, if I can squash it a little bit more so I can show it to you. One more time in the full view. And then we'll wrap things up. So I hope I got it all. If you have any questions, if I missed anything about the squash books. I was gonna talk about belly bands, but I decided not to do belly bands, but to do a belly band would be easy. You would just take a piece of you know, designer series paper. You know, I was thinking of doing belly bands. Whenever I do belly bands, I use my bucket of crafty goodness. I use one inch strips of paper, right? And I just, I might have to daisy chain the pieces of paper together and you can make a belly band for your book. But those are different ways to enclose it, enclose it. So let's see, there we go. We got it all. yippee yay yay There we go. There we go, close it, tie it. But if you wanted to do a belly band, you see you would take an inch strip 
and you would probably daisy chain two inch strips together and you would just wrap it, glue it. Nope, you can do one with 12 inches. That's how you do a belly band. And then put some of your little cute embellishments on the belly band and that's how you make a belly band as a closure. So now you have really four ways of doing closures or actually three, let me see. Was it three ways? We have our, we have our using our back cover with our ribbon through it, right? We have that way of doing a closure. We have our, our slider, our slider elements, right? That's another way of doing a closure. And we have our belly band. So yeah, there's three ways I showed you. And other ones are just variations of the same ways. Okay, so there we go. We'll open it up one more time as I read the comments and then I can show you this last sort of. Oops, I love the sheer ribbon because you can see your embellishments through it. I need to be able to tie ribbons better. If I tie them upside down, they tend to get the little the little ends of the ribbon stay down. Sometimes I have to tuck my ribbon under. I, if I turn it upside down, my, my, my tails and my ribbons go the right way. All right, this was so much fun making squash books. I'm glad I challenged myself. Brenda, don't worry, you didn't miss it. You just watch it, it's all recorded. Patty, let's see. Uh, let's see, got Patty, does not have a question? You missed your tutorial on how to make the book? No, yeah, it's just right there in my channel. The book, I showed how to make the whole book itself. So bottom line is you just take cardstock and you, you, know, you fold it different ways. You need three different coordinating colors of cardstock. That was in part one. So as we close up here, part one was I showed you how to take three coordinating colors of cardstock, like here's Bermuda Bay, Basic Gray, and Real Red, and how to glue those together. In part two, we used the scan and cut, where I showed you how to create the different triangles for creating your shapes for your, for your book. And in this part three, I showed you how to make covers for your book. Again, we used to scan and cut a little bit. I showed you how to decorate your book using snail dies, making this little envelope, how to make your embellishments. I have another video on how to cut out these pattern paper with the scan and cut. Okay, so I have another, I have another video on that too. So I'll link that in the description. But that's how to do it. I'm glad I challenged myself. I joined a swap. I've already sent off my first book that was in the first video. I've already sent that off. I'm glad I, I'm glad I did that because it challenged me to learn a new project, and I looked up a video from a few years ago by May May Crafts. I used that as my guide, and then I did my whole scan and cut thing, the whole paper chef thing. I did it with snail mail. That was a twist on it. I did it with, I did my own thing. I didn't, I didn't always put hard covers on it. I cut out different shapes. I mean, I pretty much did my own thing, but using that as a guide. That's how you, that's how crafting works. You use other things for inspiration. Okay, lastly, I went to the post office to mail this graduation card. <laughs> and uh, this is what happened. I stand in line. My, my lines are so long at the post office, right, that I stand in, at the post office, and that's when I write my messages. I went like this to write my message to my friend who's graduating from college, and there was no white paper. I was like, oh, darn. So I have these white pieces, and I'm going to stamp something on the inside again, or congratulations or something. I'm going to go ahead and write the message at home this time, and Monday I'm going to go mail this. But that's what the shaker card is, and it's related to this project. That's what I wanted to show to you. I almost mailed it. I tried to mail it. I had nothing to write on. I was like, if I had a, one of those fluorescent pens, you know, like I would have wrote, written a message, like the glow pens. But it was, it's black <laughs> in the inside, and I needed, a, I needed that paper. But anyway, I was all ready. I had my little happy mail envelope to put it in. There's a gift card in here. I was all ready. Anyway, it never got in the mail. But it's still, it's, there's still time. It's not that she's graduating right away. It's just that they're, you know, she's moving soon, and I wanted to get it mailed before she moves. But that's, that's another variation of this project using my bucket of crafty goodness, all the little extra embellishments, and it's kind of related to the snail mail squash book. So after this video, I'm going to go ahead and take this little sticky note off. That's, that's helping me remember that the squash book has to go up. That's the front, and I'm going to finish decorating this one. So, or I might not. I mean, I think the back cover is cute too. Just having a back cover only... Yeah, I probably put a cover on it because I've already made one. So in this video, I did teach you how to make it. And I even have extra uh, octagons to make more covers with. Well, that's all for now. This is the Paper Chef. Thank you for joining me. And I hope you enjoyed this squash book tutorial.